chapter. Happy Sabbath, happy Sabbath, my dear friends out there and fellow believers. Let us give thanks to the Almighty God for His mercies and grace that is made it possible for you and me to listen to another wonderful message that He has prepared through me for you and the entire world. Today, the message is about to give us is titled the sounding of the trumpets the sounding of the trumpets the key test is carefully selected from the book of the revelation chapter 8 verse 2 to 6 revelation chapter 8 verse 2 to 6 it is written here and i read and i saw the seven angels who stand before god and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at his altar. He was given much incense. And he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, with the prayers of the saints, ascended before God, from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Verse 6. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Hallelujah. My dear friend out there, once again, I wish you happy Sabbath. As you live and getting ready for the eventual return of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah, our Redeemer, and Savior, there is a period of time that will happen on the earth which is known as the Great Tribulation. This will be a time of horror and judgment upon the earth that will be unmatched by any other time in human history. This spirit will emerge within which a series of trumpet soundings heard strange events falling upon the inhabitants of the earth. The book of Revelation of Jesus Christ describes the events that occur during this time. So, Revelation chapter 8 verse 2 to 6 serves as an introduction to the blowing of the seven trumpets. This test, my brother and sister, represents seven heavenly angels commissioned to herald a new series of woes about to be sent upon the inhabitants of the earth. Shall we humbly pray before delving deep down into it. The most righteous and holiest one, Almighty Father, you are our God and our King. I thank you so much this morning, or today, be your holy Sabbath, for the opportunity granted us to listen to the wonderful message that you have prepared for us. This morning, I ask you to forgive us our sins, then you inculcate into us the Holy Spirit so that we can be under the unction of the Holy Spirit. So this message will be very receptive. Our God again, open our hearts and our mind to listen to this message as we comprehend. As you have set me aside to preach this message, I ask you to grant me the boldness that I need, the intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge to go through this intelligently to glorify and magnify your holy name. Again, Anyone who will take the trouble to listen to this message from A to Z, my God and King, I ask you to bless him or her abundantly. If anyone is sick, my Lord, if a person listens to this message, my God, get him or her healed. In the mighty and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, I have prayed. It's thanksgiving. Amen. Yes. At the heart of the seven trumpets in Revelation are the judgments that come with the blowing of each one. Each trumpet will be blown by a different angel, but the angels are not named in the Bible. However, Isaiah mentions the angel of God's presence. According to Isaiah 
chapter 63, verse 9. And Luke chapter 1, verse 19 speaks of Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. Jewish tradition identified seven angels who stood before God as one Uriel, number two, Raphael, number three, Raguel, number four, Michael, number five, Saraquel, number six, Gabriel, and number seven, Remiel. Yes, many scholars believe that John refers to these seven angels. It is also believed that these same angels poured out the seven last plagues. The seven trumpets are the contents of the seven seal judgment in that the seven seal summons the angels who sound the trumpets according to Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 to 5. But my brother and sister, before the Angels sound or blow their trumpets. The prayers of God's people are offered with incense. These prayers are shown rising before God. The incense is a symbol showing that their prayers are acceptable to God. Then the angel takes a censer, fills it with fire from the altar, and throws it on the earth. Therefore, these judgments are in response to the prayers of the holy people of God. The presentation of the incense on the golden altar and the throwing of fire to the earth serves as signals to the seven angels to blow their trumpets and herald the woes about to be sent upon the earth and its inhabitants. My brother and sister, please take the trouble to listen to this. This is a further indication that the trumpet judgments are affected by the prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, so now let's take them in turns, one after the other, the trumpet or sounding of trumpets to know what they entail. Number one, the sounding of the first trumpet, according to Revelation chapter 8, verses 6, 6 and 7. The first angel blows his trumpet, and hail and fire mixed with blood are thrown upon the earth. This imagery is similar to the Egyptian plague of hail and fire, according to Exodus chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. Hail and fire are common symbols of God's judgment. Remember and take note, this hail and fire devastated the entire land of Egypt, destroying every plant and tree of the field for the refusal to let the Israelites go. Yes, when Pharaoh hardened his heart, this happened to him. It also brings to one's mind the prophets of Ezekiel, which God fights against Gog, the enemy nation of the north, according to Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 22. So, Dominion and Gomorrah, along with the cities of the plains, were destroyed by raining fire and sulfur. The effect of this trumpet blast on the earth is that a third of trees was burned up and all green grass was also burned up. Mary and sister, only a third of the trees and green grass are burned up. This indicates, listen to this, God's way of saying that a portion are destroyed, but not all a portion, because it's a third that was burned up. Notice another place in prophecy where God speaks of third, thirds in judgment. If we read Zechariah chapter 13, verses 8 and 9, it takes time to read. Because of time, I'm going to read all. This biblical evidence of Revelation chapter 8, verse 7, leads one to conclude, my brother, that the first trumpet blast portrays the consequences 
visited upon those who rejected and crucified Jesus Christ and opposed the gospel. Yes, that is what happened. My brother and sister, so both the people and their leaders were held responsible for those acts. As God's covenant people, they had for they have full access to the promises of God. However, a sizable number of them became opponents to the gospel and persecutors of God's new covenant people. Yes, they were chasing them and persecuting them and killing them and harming them. Yes, and also torturing them. Now, they are the first ones to experience the consequences of rejecting the covenant. As the Bible states clearly that judgment begins at the house of God, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, so the divine judgment upon the divine judgment poured upon God's own people who rejected his covenant and became the oppressors and persecutors of the followers of Christ. So it does not matter when you go to church. Are you an opponent of God? Are you on the side of the devil and you are in the church, my brother and sister? This tribulation will rest upon you. This judgment will come upon you. The sounding of the trumpets and its consequences will come after you. So please repent and do what God pleases. Yes, number two, the sounding of the second trumpet, according to Revelation chapter 8, verses 8 and 9. As the second angel sounds his trumpet, something like a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Yes, mountain symbolizes a kingdom. And the great mountain of Revelation chapter 8 verse 8 has to do with a great kingdom. Take note. When this happened, a third of the sea became blood. A third of all living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. This brings to mind the first Egyptian plague in which, in which the waters were turned into blood and the fish were destroyed, according to Exodus chapter 7, verses 20 and 21. In speaking about Babylon's coming judgment, Jeremiah prophesied in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 25 that judgment will come upon the enemies of God. And brother and sister, yes, the second trumpet does describe the downfall of the Roman Empire and the devastation of its economic and social order. Remember also, the first prophecy of Daniel with a large state of different metals, according to the image. The stone that strikes the image becomes a great mountain that fills the whole earth, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 35, which the stone represents Jesus Christ, our Lord, and his kingdom. Yes, which represent the kingdom of God, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. The plagues of the first two trumpets affect two powers. And what are they? The Jewish nation and the Roman Empire. My brother and sister, these two hostile nations united together in their opposition to God and, the, and participated in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ our Lord. My brother and sister, listen to this carefully. Yes. And then, what happened? The judgment began with God's household. Those under the covenant, of covenant who later worked in opposition to Jesus Christ. My brother and sister, it is said by the Bible that judgment will begin in the house of God. So who are in the house of God and still doing things that pleases the devil, my brother and sister, you will be found wanting. So please change today. Express to those who joined the, who joined the Jews in putting uh, Christ in Jesus to death 
and subsequently oppressed the persecuted the, and oppressed and persecuted the church in the first century of the Christian era. So my brother and sister, the second sounding of the trumpet will also do a lot, will emit what we call agony unto people who do not believe God or people who are not serving God well, especially those who call themselves Christians and they are doing something different. They are doing otherwise. My brother, are you in the church and with the church? Are you a believer, believing Jesus Christ? A day is coming. It will be an agonized day for you. So please repent. Number three, the sounding of the third trumpet. According to Revelation chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. Yes. At the trumpet sound of third angel, John sees a great star burning like a torch. Feeling down or falling down from heaven upon a third of rivers and the fountains of waters. My brother and sister, what was he doing? Polluting them with bitterness and bringing death to many people. That was what the third trumpet or sounding of the third trumpet brought. The name of the great star that fell is Wormed Wood. Wormwood was a plant with a bitter taste found in Palestine. This bitter plant with which this bitter plant is used a few times by the prophet. The rivers and springs of water symbolize spiritual nourishment. The word of God and salvation for spiritually thirsty people. And God, my brother and sister, that's what it stands for. Now listen to this. The scene of the third trumpet shows Satan's involvement in polluting the souls and streams of truth and salvation through human religious teachers and leaders, causing them to have a deadly poisonous effect. What kind of message are you receiving, my brother and sister? That great star wormwood falling on the fresh water turn a third of them into worm wood. Yes, you are in the church, but you still believe other teachings that are contrary to the will of God. Is that how you are, or is that what you are doing? My brother and sister, this worm wood is a symbol of bitterness through sin and apostasy, per perverting gospel teaching as a consequence of that apostasy. Many among people died from waters because they were made bitter. Are you also being made bitter by receiving these false teachings out there in the world? My brother and sister, in speaking about Jerusalem, Jeremiah declared this message in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 15, and chapter 20. 3 verse 15. Take a time to read. What is it? Jeremiah used the picture of wormwood to show that the punishment fits the crime. Yes. So whatever crime you are causing in this world, on this land, my brother and sister, you will face its consequence. Yes. The suffering will be bitter because their bitter wickedness. Yes. Jeremiah spoke of the prophet polluting Israel with idolatry. Yes, are you also being polluted by idolatry? What shall do attend my brother and sister? Therefore, God was polluting them with bad waters. That which will cause a great agony on them a day to come. My brother and sister, take your time and listen to this carefully because a day is coming, people will suffer on this earth. Dear friend out there, yes, with bitterness of suffering, they will go through. Therefore, bitter suffering is coming upon earth, and many people will die from these judgments. The early Christians were warned of the coming apostasy. Yes, apostasy was certain, and it has started. 
Many strong believers are walking away. They are going astray. Jesus spoke of false prophets who would seduce the disciples with their deceptive teachings according to Matthew chapter 24, verses 4, 5, and 11. My brother and sister and fellow believers, in his farewell address to the elders in Ephesus, Paul the Apostle predicted the coming apostasy in the church according to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 26 to 31. And of course, it has started. So you have to be very careful and stand firm, holding fast your faith and believing in Jesus Christ. Yes, the consequence of that apostasy was a spiritual death of many who drank of that polluted and poisonous water. My brother and sister, uh, so are you doing drinking this polluted water, this poisonous water, referring to messages that are contrary to the will of God? Are you one of them? Then repent, because something bad is about to happen to those people. Yes, point number four. The sounding of the fourth trumpet, according to the revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter 8, verse 12. What is it? The fourth trumpet sounds and a plague strikes a third of the sun, the moon, and the stars. So that a third of their light is darkened, and the day did not brighten for a third of it. Why? And the night likewise. So there was no difference between day and night because there was a total darkness on a third of the world. This is a, a reminiscence of the ninth plague, the plague of darkness on Egypt, according to Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 to 23. Ezekiel envisioned the coming of a renowned plague on the land in his prophecy against Egypt, as Ezekiel chapter 32, verses 7 and 8 prophesied. We learned in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 to 14, that the sun no longer shined, the moon became like blood, and the stars falling from the sky are symbols of final judgment on a nation. So in Revelation chapter 8, verse 12, we again see only a third of these celestial bodies struck, the sun, the moon, and the stars. Therefore, this is not yet the final judgment, but only a partial judgment. The great tribulation affecting part of the earth as the absence of light, darkness, is the lack of spiritual understanding and insight of the gospel. My brother and sister, are you also lacking spiritual understanding? Is your mind darkened to the extent that you never comprehend any message of the Lord? It is a symbol of sin. My brother and sister, take note of this. When people reject the gospel light, for darkness, they bring God's judgment upon themselves. According to John chapter 3, verse 19. So if you intentionally reject the truth, because you want to continue doing what you are doing, which is not spiritual, which is not biblical, then my brother and sister, judgment is about to fall upon you. So what Jesus made clear, well, very clear, is that darkness is the consequence of ignoring and denying the gospel. Yes, the truth. And whatever is truth is truth. It can never be hidden. It can never be trampled upon. When it is even, it is even drowned, it will come out by all means because it is the truth. My brother and sister, listen to this. A vulture or an eagle, as you listen to this carefully, my brother and sister, according to the Greek word, Arctus, which may seem both a vulture and an eagle. Then John hears an eagle flying overhead and crying out with a loud voice, three more woes to come. That is after the fourth judgment. My brother and sister, if you thought the first four trumpets were full of terrible judgment, the final 
try trumpets or final three trumpets, my Lord and friend, as you are there, are worse than what we have heard before. My brother and sister, woe to those who live on the earth because the rest of the trumpets are about to sound and they are very deadly. The eagle is an image used by God as a harbinger of doom. The Old Testament uses the eagle as a picture of destruction according to Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse, verses 49 and 50. So, in Ezekiel chapter 17, we read a parable of two eagles. The message of the parable was that Babylon was the eagle destroying Jerusalem. Yes, God can use your own enemy to destroy you if you don't cling to him. So be very careful. Ezekiel's prophecy rests on God's promise made at the inauguration of the nation Israel. God promised curses on Israel if they disobeyed. One of the images of the curses is in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 49 that a foreign nation will destroy them sweeping down like eagle. John in Revelation chapter 8 sees an eagle flying overhead declaring woes upon the nation. My brother and sister, are you out there? The nation, as the rest of the judgment about to be executed. So, as I said early on, God can use your enemies to persecute you. But stand firm and repent and do what is right, what pleases God, and God will deliver you out of the hand of that enemy. Number five, the sounding of the fifth trumpet, according to Ch uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 to 12. At uh, the sound of the fifth trumpet, John the Revelator observes a star falling from heaven to the earth. This falling star represents Satan, and his falling from heaven to earth also identified as the angel of the abyss, that is the bottomless pit. Again, to him, was given the key of the pit of the abyss. The abyss is the dark prison where demonic forces are confined. According to Luke chapter 8, verse 31, and 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. It also represents the headquarters of the demonic forces of darkness, the power of evil, however, do not have their own freedom of movement. According to Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Christ is in, Christ is in demonic forces are under his control. Yes, listen to this carefully. Christ is in possession of the keys of his, the demonic forces under his control. It is he who authorizes Satan to unlock the abyss and opens it. So, if Christ is protecting you, if he doesn't want the devil to worry you, there's no way the devil can worry you. But sometimes he allows it to test your faith, to see whether you stand strong and firm before him. My dear friend out there, listen to this carefully. The falling star opens the abyss from which a cloud of dense smoke emerges like smoke of a great furnace. Like smoke of a great furnace is a reminder of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. This smoke coming out of the abyss is the fifth trumpet, great thick darkness in the sky. It later becomes total after being Partial darkness. The sun and the air became darkened by the smoke of the abyss. Yes, this reminds us of the darkness that fell on Egypt, which was so thick that people could not see each other or move from one place to another. According to Exodus chapter 10, verses 22 and 23. Now, dear friends and fellow believers, 
the next scene emerged as from the smoke from the smoke as John the Revelator sees is a terrible what invasion of locust. My brother and sister, this indicates that the smoke coming from the abyss is not ordinary smoke, but an exceptional huge cloud of locusts that blocks the sun to the point of total darkness. Yes, it was very huge and thick. My brother and sister, the locusts of the Egyptian plague also darkened the sky, according to Exodus chapter 10, verse 15. My brother and sister, now listen to this. So, locusts are also a symbol of judgment in the Old Testament. Listen to this carefully. Yes, these locusts have the power of scorpions and they attack and torment people. These demonic uh, locusts are now unleashed to harm the face of the earth. And when we talk of the earth, referring to human beings like you and me. Yes, the good news is that they are unable to harm those who are sealed. However, but only those who do not have the seal of God upon their heads suffered. According to Revelation chapter 9 verse 10. So this morning, I am taking the trouble to ask you, are you sealed? Are you going to be sealed or you will not be sealed? Yes, it all depends upon you. Your destiny is fixed upon the character you are portraying now and the days ahead of you. My brother and sister, listen to this and come to Jesus because he's calling you. Otherwise, when these trumpets are sounded, you'll be found wanting. Yes, so those who are sealed are the ones whom God knows and recognizes as his own. According to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. My brother and sister, they are protected and will not be harmed by these demonic powers and attacks. Yes, the days that are coming, if you are sealed by God, then these de demonic attacks will never be emitted upon you. Yes, the demonic locusts are not allowed to kill people, but only permit that they should be tormented. Yes, even though they will be allowed to harm people, but they will never kill them. They will only be allowed to torment people. This fifth trumpet, people is not physical. Now listen to this. This fifth uh, trumpet plague is not physical physical but spiritual and mental now listen to this in those days people will seek death and they will no way find it yes a day is coming people will come will call death uh, please death come and kill me please death come and kill them they will run to hide themselves under rocks and wherever that they would fall upon them and kill them but never never why listen to this and they will no longer die and death will flee from them according to revelation chapter uh, 9 verse uh, 6 today we human beings are fleeing from death a day will come death will flee from us when we want it to come and take us and die my brother and sister you listen to this the given period of this demonic Torment is five months. This reminds us of the Genesis flood that lasted and harmed the earth for five months. According to Genesis chapter 7 verse 24 and chapter 8 verse 3. During this period, during this period Noah and his family were under special protection. Remember, and the waters of the great flood could not harm them. My brother and sister, and when that day comes, will you also be under the protection of God? Yes, it all depends. It boils down to whatever you are doing now. The demonic locusts appear 
like horses prepared for battle, according to Joel chapter 2, verse 4. They wear what looks like crowns of gold. They have faces like humans, hairs like women's hair, and teeth like a lion, and nose of deer wings. The nose of their scaly exterior is like breastplate. Wings like the nose of the battle of chariots. According to Joel chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. The demonic locusts are further said to have tails like scorpions and stings. And authority in their tails was to torment the people for five months. Yes, so people will suffer for five good months. The tail is a symbol of deception by means of persuasion which Satan uses to mislead human beings to rebel against God and his fellow people, those who are following God, according to Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. My brother and sister, listen to this as you take heed to them. These scorpion-like demonic locusts have as their king the angel of the beast. His name is given in two languages. In Hebrew, it is Abaddon, meaning destruction. And in Greek, it is Apollyon, meaning destroyer. Yes, John the Revelator concludes the scene with a warning to humanity that the fifth trumpet plague is just the first woe. It is just the first woe. Two woes are yet to come. The wicked are to experience more dreadful sufferings. Are you going to take part of it? My brother and sister, Jesus is calling you today. That come to him so that you will be under his protection so that this plagues will never be meted upon you. Point number six. The sounding of the sixth trumpet, according to Revelation chapter 9, verse 13 to 21. In the scene of the blowing of the fifth trumpet, the horse-like demonic locusts were prepared for battle, according to Revelation 9, 5. Under the leadership of the angel of the abyss named Destroyer, who was Satan himself, Revelation chapter 9 evidences that when the sixth angel sounds his trumpet, John the Revelator hears a voice coming from the horns of the golden altar, which is before God. My brother and sister, the scene of the sixth trumpet, my brother and sister, the scene of the sixth trumpet presents an advance in divine response to the prayers of God's uh, oppressed people. Two things come to light from the test. First, or number one, the heavenly voices commands the six angel to release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. This scene reminds us of the four angels holding the destroying uh, winds who are restrained from harming the earth until the sealing of God's people has been completed, which is written in Revelation chapter 7, verse 1 to 3. It is at the symbol of river Euphrates that the four angels re restrain the demonic army organized against God's people. The demonic force are under the sovereign control of God's Almighty. Yes, God Almighty. So there's no way they can overcome God unless God allows them or permits them to do what they want to do. My brother and sister, the second point here is that the demonic forces have no freedom to act until the time set for them, for them by God. The four angels are said to have been prepared for the hour and day and month and year yes this can be understood releasing of the angel it is god who allows them to act if god does not love them they cannot act so my brother and sister listen to this 
the demonic locust, as it said, were allowed to torment the wicked for five months when they were with the sound of the, uh, the fifth trumpet. In the sale of the sixth trumpet, the demonic cavalry completes a widespread killing. The time is coming when God will remove the restraints that's making it possible for the demonic forces to exercise their activity as never before in history and carry out his judgment on the inhabitants of the earth. The number of horsemen of the demonic army is 200 million. The phrase I heard, the number of them, relates evidently to those who have been sealed of Revelation chapter 7 verse 4. And the numbering of the 144,000 sealed people of God. My brother and sister, and those demonic horsemen are thus the demonic counterfeit of God's people. Both groups, that God's sealed people and Satan's host, are prepared for the final battle of this world, of this world history. My brother and sister, the power of these demonic horses is to kill lies in their mouths and in their tails so they use their mouths and their tails to kill both the tails and the mouths are in action in preparation for final battle and what happened my brother and sister the final battle against god's people causing both torture and death so in the sixth trumpet they will kill, but in the fifth, they will just harm, my brother. So it means God works accordingly. So listen to this and take note. The consequence of these plagues is that a third of humankind is destroyed. The demonic forces or the demonic horse tails are like snakes, having heads, and with them, they cause harm by tormenting in revelation chapter 12 verse 9 satan is designated as the old serpent and isaiah refers to the prophet's teaching false instruction as the tail so are you with the tail listening to the false prophets or false teachings of brother and sister according to isaiah chapter 10 verses 14 and 15 Take note of this. We can see that the tail is a symbol of deception and false teachings which Satan uses to lead human beings to turn from God and brother and sister and follow him. While the demonic horses torment people with their tail, they kill with their mouths from which fire, smoke, and so far are issuing my brother and sister this reminds us of the three demonic coming uh, demons coming from the mouth of satan and and is and his associates in the scene of the final Armageddon battle according to revelation chapter 16 verses 13 and 14. my brother and sister out there we listen to this carefully. Yes, all his, all this suggests that the final conflict between the forces of light and darkness will not be militarily, but spiritual. The character of that conflict will be verbal and ideological. A battle for mind by means of persuasion rather than physical force. This is the kind of warfare that Paul had in mind when he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse, 6, verse 3 to 5, and then again in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12, as he instructs you to be with the full armor of God so that we can be protected. The sixth trumpet plays affect 
a third part of humankind who suffers terrible torment and massacre. Rome, uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 15 and 18 evidence that the rest of the humankind who survived the demonic destruction refused to repent in their helpless and hopeless situation. They continue in their course of worshipping the demons and idols of gold and of silver and of brass and of stone and of wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk. Is that what we're worshipping? Just so, a mere so. An image that you have a form and you are buying before it. Today, Jesus calling you to come to him. Paul describes the sins of the wicked as the product of idolatry. When they did not repent, my brother and sister, so God is calling you to come to him. When they did not repent of their madness, or their sorcery, or their fornication, or their theft, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, 32, and then Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, and then chapter 22, verse 15, all attest the fact of what God is telling you and me this morning. Yes, the last point number seven, the sounding of the seventh trumpet, according to Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 to 19. The seventh trumpet signals the consummation of all things and completion of the mystery of God. I went to Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. At the moment it's blown, John the Revelator hears loud voice in heaven declaring the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever. Hallelujah. Brother and sister, this world which has become under the dominion and rule of Satan's power and in rebellion against God will finally come back under God's dominion and rule. The establishment of God's eternal kingdom on earth will continue to be in existence until when God continue to be in existence until when God has put all his enemies under his feet. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 25, you will get to have more knowledge or taste about what I'm telling you this morning. Following the declaration of the heavenly host, the 24 elders as representatives of redeemed humanity, my brother and sister, listen to this, fall down before the throne in worship and sing a hymn of thanksgiving to God for taking his great power and reigning here. God is referred to as the Lord God, the Almighty, who is and who was. To the wrath of the nations, God responds with wrath. Listen to this. And I am taking it again. To the wrath of the nations, God responds with wrath. This outpouring of God's wrath is for the purpose of ending the rebellion of the wicked against God Almighty, who is not heaven. The vision ends with the, with the opening of the temple of God in heaven. It's in the most part enabling John to see the act of the covenant in his temple appointed or accompanied by lightnings and voices and thunder and earthen and great hail, which represents the manifestation of the divine presence. According to Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, and chapter 8, verse 5, and chapter 16, verse 18. And there, friend out there, the mention of the Ark of the Covenant at the beginning of the new vision has special significance. First of all, it was by the Ark of the Covenant that the Book of the Covenant was stored. The second reason is that. My brother and sister, listen to this. The second reason for mentioning the Ark 
of the covenant is for is for the fact that it was the symbol of God's continual presence with his people and the assurance of his promise. It was also the reminder to Israel uh, of God's loyal love during their wilderness journeys and battles. Again, it is a reminder of, to God's end time people of his love and covenant promise to be with them through all the trials and they will experience in the closing period of earth's history. In conclusion, my brother and sister, the seven trumpets, just like the seven seals, are describing the symbols that is happening on this earth before Christ returns. My brother and sister, we see and mix the warning of his coming as judge. The Lord Jesus Christ also speaks about the signs of his return in Matthew chapter 24. These signs are given to us as encouragement to be prepared. This man is asking you, are you prepared? Or you are not preparing yourself? Or later you'll be prepared, or you'll never be prepared for Jesus Christ, Christ's second coming. Can you look at this world and what happened in past years and give examples of these warnings which go unheeded by this world? And does that exhort us to be ready for Christ's coming? This is my question. If you look around, you see what's happening, you hear what is happening. My Lord, my brother and sister, is this telling you? Are this urging you to be prepared, to be ready for the coming of our Lord and Master Jesus, right? If it is yes, then peace be unto you. But if it is not, then I beseech thee humbly that from today repent. Come to Jesus, do what is right. So when he surfaces on this earth, you will never be found wanting. And by that, you and me will meet in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Our Lord and Father, we thank you so much this morning once again for this wonderful message you have given to us. We beseech thee, humbly, our God and King, to let this message sit down into our hearts as we comprehend it and become doers of the word and not hearers as such. Help us take heed to it as you feast into us, your Holy Spirit, to help us all, to enable us to understand it more and then do what is right. So when Jesus comes, none of us will find one thing. Again, I pray for those who are sick, strike for the hand upon them this Holy Sabbath and get them healed. I also pray that God and King will help us to achieve our aim. All the blessings that are left in God, all the blessings that you have prepared for us today, be your Holy Sabbath, let them be fall upon us abundantly so that we can also be a blessing to other people. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed this thanksgiving. Amen. Happy Sabbath.